Jesus Christ, O source of light, in you we see light. Truly light from light you shine on all creation. Shine your light upon us all, grant us joy with your bright dawn. Alleluia. Holy Lord, you dwell in light in realms of glory. Keep us free from sin and shame, dispel all darkness. Grant us purity of heart, may your justice guide our lives. Alleluia. Virgin Mary, you are blessed among all women. You were chosen by the Lord to be his mother. The eternal Son took flesh, dwelling nine months in your Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you reveal that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us worthy, make us holy by the indwelling of your Spirit, and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights, so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only begotten Son who is worshipped, whose light radiated upon the river and who accepted the baptism from John, his forerunner, and to the one Holy Spirit who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God, and the peoples and nations shout for joy on this day of your baptism. You have dawned from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River and cry out to him. Blessed are you, O Christ, O Word of God. You willingly emptied yourself and took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and heirs of your kingdom. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, to sanctify us through this great epiphany. Create a new heart within us. Make us newborn children of your Father, and pour out forgiveness for your flock, that we may worship you and glorify your Father and give thanks to your Holy Spirit forever.
O Christ, word of the Heavenly Father, you became man for our sake and were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and mercy and accept the fragrance of our incense that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kaddishat, Aloha, Kaddishat, from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Barak Moro. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, now I myself, Paul, urge you through gentleness and clemency of Christ I am humble when face to face with you, but brave toward you when absent. I beg you that when present, I may not have to be brave with that confidence with which I intend to act boldly against someone who considers us as acting according to the flesh. For although we are in the flesh, we do not battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our battle are not of flesh but are enormously powerful, capable of destroying fortresses. We destroy arguments and every pretension, raising itself against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. And we are ready to punish every disobedience once your obedience is complete. Look at what confronts you. Whoever is confident of belonging to Christ 
should consider that he belongs to Christ, so do we. And even if I should boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for tearing you down, I shall not be put to shame. May I, have, may I not seem as one frightening you through letters, for someone will say, his letters are severe and forceful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Such a person must understand that what we are in word through letters when absent, that we are also in action when present. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Hallelujah. the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. You may sign to listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, the next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me, who ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from the sky and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who shall baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen, and I have testified, that he is the Son of God. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his word. I have seen and I have testified that he is the Son of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, this is John the Baptist in the very beginning of the Gospel of St. John. And it's an interesting thing to see because we know of the visitation, we know of at least distant relationship between Elizabeth and the Blessed Virgin Mary. So John 
and John the Baptist, Jesus and John the Baptist are both cousins, however extended that might mean, which of course we understand could be third, fourth, someone by marriage, but they're family. So it's unusual when we have St. John recording that John the Baptist is saying, I didn't know him. He's not saying, I don't know Jesus. He's saying, I don't know who the Messiah is actually going to be personally. And so what we see with John the Baptist is this development that takes place. And as we mentioned a few weeks ago, the silence that surrounds the nativity, this is the path how God leads us. He doesn't always tell us what's coming, but he does expect us to be on the path. And so with John the Baptist, what's very clear by this testimony, and clearly John the Evangelist, John the Apostle wants us to know this, is there's a development of the great, the great prophet of the Old Testament. John is the last of the prophets. And he's there to indicate the coming of the promised one, the Messiah. And yet John wants us to know, writing his gospel, the last of the four, and decades after the other three were written, he wants us to know John the Baptist, in a sense, his spiritual journey. Yes, he's a great prophet. Yes, he's a great saint. Yes, he receives grace of prophecy. Yes, he's inundated by graces. His birth was, conception and birth are miraculous. His parents were old, old, old by the time he was born. All of these miracles surround John, and yet our Lord wants us to understand that he himself often walked in darkness. And that's very consoling for us, because of course we know that many of the choices we make in our lives are kind of confused. We don't necessarily lead by flipping a coin. But providence doesn't always indicate to us clearly. So what John, from these quotations in this gospel, clearly what John the Baptist, John the forerunner, had received the gift of prophecy to do was that you will announce the coming of the Messiah. And that's it. And so he says that this is why I came baptizing in water. So it's just a washing ceremony. John the Baptist, what he does is not baptism like you'll see this morning. This is a transformation interiorly of an individual. John is still linked with the Old Testament, and the Pharisees did washings. They washed dishes, they washed their hands from their fingers up to their elbows before they ate. They had all kinds of baptisms. Baptism is just washing, plunging. And so what John is doing is he's using it by saying, it is time for you to turn to the Lord your God. Because we know from the prophecies of Daniel five centuries before that the Messiah would come in 490 years. So this is it. And so the generations, why the generation around our Lord were all agitated, waiting for this moment. And there were false messiahs before our Lord and there were false messiahs after our Lord. Men who appeared with, in some cases, thousands of men armed to the teeth coming on Jerusalem because I'm here to save Israel. Which is why on Palm Sunday, when our Lord comes in, he comes in you know, bouncing back and forth on a donkey. Nobody's armed. No one's threatening Jerusalem. Which is why Pilate says, they say you're the king. And so he's taken by this whole moment. So what John is doing three years before that donkey ride is he's reminding the people of Israel, he's saying you must turn towards the Lord and be faithful to what God has given you for guidance. So when all these people are coming down to the Jordan River for baptism, they're coming down to acknowledge that the choices I have made in my life were often fragmentary, broken, wrong, distorted, selfish, whatever. That's all that sin means. The word itself, as we've mentioned numerous times in Saxon, it's an old English word, just means mistake. And repentance just means I acknowledge that not all of my choices that I have made in my life were perfect. That's all it means. That's all that repentance means. There are some of those choices which are done and gone with. Some of them I will be haunted with for the rest of my days. And so repentance just means I take this to heart. I realize that my life has not lived up to the goodness, the truth, and the beauty for which I was created. That's why when we talk about an offense against God, it doesn't mean God's sitting up in the heavens, some old man with a big beard, waiting to throw us into prison. That's not offense against God. Offense against God is, I made you for better. 
I made you for what is beautiful and noble and good in a human level, and I made you to be transfigured by grace to be my heirs and my children, transformed and elevated to my life of an intimacy of love. And yet you only chose yourself and you chose those wrong decisions. That's the offense against God. If you put it in human terms, it's a bit like a family. You rear your children, you send them off to school, and the kid at 24 is making all kinds of stupid decisions. He's flunked out of the first semester of university because it took him three years to finally get there, and then you finally get him there. He's 23, and you just wasted $14,000 because he decided it was something party time. Now, you're not going to lock him in the basement or kill him, but you're offended because you've invested 20 years in this kid along with hundreds of thousands of dollars over the decades. And he's just like, uh, he's a loser. My kid's a loser. That's offensive for a parent to recognize. That's the offense of sin. God would look at us and say, but I didn't make you for that. Will you get out of the gutter, please? That's the offense again. So when John is preaching in the Jordan, he's just saying, acknowledge and recognize where your lives are and where they should have been at this point. And then come and acknowledge that and be washed. Acknowledge your desire to wash away those bad decisions and to go forward. That's the baptisms of John. That's why he says, I went to go preach the baptism, the repentance, so that the Messiah could be revealed to Israel. The birth in Bethlehem, the handful of shepherds, a few magi, that's not a revelation to the world. That's a few people who have known about this very unusual birth taking place. A month after his birth, they're in the temple. The old man Simeon and the old woman Anna, they recognize this baby. Amongst all of the other hundreds, if not thousands of people in the whole temple, esplanade, buying, shopping, going to the temple, all of the concourse of people there, there are two old people that recognize this baby. That's not a revelation to the world. It's a revelation to individuals. But what John does over those months, years of his preaching, is he brings thousands of people down to this river to walk a number of miles from Jerusalem down to the Jordan. He just knows that in this act of repentance to turn towards the Lord, the Messiah is going to be revealed. He doesn't know exactly how or when. He's only told the one upon you see the Spirit hovering over him, that is the one who is the Messiah. Now we know with his gift of prophecy when our Lord comes down to the Jordan, he does recognize him. Because he says to our Lord, I shouldn't be baptizing you. I shouldn't be washing you. You should be washing me. And our Lord says for the moment, we keep it this way, that all justice be fulfilled, he says. And then when our Lord and John go down into the water, then we have the whole event of the opening of the heavens, the voice coming out, this is my beloved son, and the appearance of this dove over hovering over our Lord. And so John is giving testimony later on that John the evangelist is recording in this gospel. When we talk about our religious faith or the path that God has created us for, it is an outward action and an inward transformation. What John is doing by preaching repentance is just asking them to think about their lives, think about what they're supposed to be doing. He's not transforming them interiorly. So what, when, what our Lord does is he sanctifies the waters. All we do is talk about waters in these hymns. And you did a beautiful job trying to do the melody this time. Congratulations. We don't always know all the Syriac melodies. In principle, they're all very easy because we have a peasant church. So all the melodies are very sing-songy and very catchy, as peasants would need to have to remember them over 16 centuries. But in this waters, the waters are sanctified. Nations be attentive. The waters are made holy. It's this idea. And I've told them if we did this correctly as an Eastern church, last Monday we'd have been marching out to the Toussaint Bridge to bless the Kennebec River and throw a hand cross into it. If you were in Russia, that's when you do your polar bear plunge because they cut a big cross into the ice and then a bunch of middle-aged men in Speedos go jumping in. 
Part of the trick is to find the, ha the hand cross that went into the waters. Well, sometime in the future. We need a younger congregation to do that though, so. <clears throat> so what we have today is that the path that our Lord asks of us is an outward action which is done when our Lord sanctifies. But when these waters are poured over, and when we have a baby that's being baptized, the priest actually holds the little critter in his left arm, and he's immersed three times in the water. So we say that at a baptism, the baby takes a shower, the priest takes a shower, and the godparents take a shower, and water is like everywhere. Now, they don't fit in the front, so we will do by what's called infusion, and the water will be poured over their foreheads, but they will face the altar, they will face what's liturgically east, when the churches are oriented, this is also geographically east because it's always facing the rising sun. So the rising sun symbolizes the resurrection of our Lord. It signifies the rising and the manifestation of God in history. So denho. We use the word denho for epiphany, but it actually means rising, as we told you last Monday. The inward transformation that takes place is more than just I realize that my choices are kind of bad sometimes, on occasion. But an inward transformation that we call the character. There's an impress of the Spirit of God upon every individual who's baptized, which disposes them further to the grace which transfigures them as they move toward the kingdom. Which is why after the baptisms are done, we're going to go around the church one time. It says three in the book, but since the church is mostly empty, we'll go around once and then back to the front and then come back up to finish and then to remove what will be the crown or the headband. And this, well, I think it will leave the belt on, but, and they will serve the mass that way. This procession around signifies from the baptism the path that we take towards the kingdom. And so it signifies, and they have all kinds of jubilant hymns that they're going to sing while we're doing that. Because it signifies the great moment that we begin this path. Because baptism is nothing but a beginning. It's an extraordinary beginning. But it's only a beginning. It's not a magic formula. Just because you're baptized doesn't mean you're going to make it in there. Judas doesn't finish well being with our Lord for three years personally, day in and day out. Baptism initiates the disposition of soul, but the character, the transformation within the individual remains for eternity. To our eternal glory within the vision of the divinity or to our eternal shame in the permanent separation. So what we have today that you're witnessing, and it's beautiful to see you have come in, is that in this outward transformation, and I have written up in the bulletin, these guys, we've been doing catechesis for two years. I don't know how many hundreds of hours we've been sitting together. Now, we're not done yet. They'll finish sometime perhaps in the spring. Because on the other hand, they're also too smart. If I have someone dumb or a baby who's not really rational yet, you know, you just kind of do the ceremonies and it's fine. And I have to say also that 30 years ago, when I would receive someone into the church, we spent six months. Because back in the 1980s, there was still Christian references culturally. But about 15 years ago, it was, began to be, all right, we're going to do a year. You're going to come in. You have to commit yourself to come in for an hour and a half each week for a year. But I have to say, quite honestly, now that we've come to the 30-year mark, nothing in society will support you. But they know that already. Don't you have debates all the time in school? And so, well, I think you debate as much as you can, as you're allowed to do. But that is the way we have to see the path that we're on. It is the voice of John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness. And so hence we spend more time, because a lot of people have asked me, are they still doing catechism? Yes, yes. Because as I wrote in the bullets, and they are the future face of St. Joseph. They have been apostolic, and these men aren't even technically Christian yet. Today, they'll be baptized. But for the last two years, it has been a real privilege. And it's been a privilege to meet you guys, too. Coming in is terrific. Because they're communicating that faith. We have people who have been Catholics for decades who communicate to no one. 
That outward transformation, that outward action is supposed to be originally from our parents to our children. That is why God makes children little sponges. They're just supposed to absorb the faith that we give them when they're little kids. We show them how you live the faith. They grow up, it's part of their identity and they keep it. We haven't done that really well in central Maine. So to be working with these guys week after week, who are genetically coming from outside the Antiochian church, and who are so desirous to communicate it to others and say, look at this, think about that, think about that. Really? That's not an idea? Think of it this way, all right? Back and forth and all over the place. It has been glorious. As a priest, there's a great consolation to see someone who embraces the gospel and says, yes, this is a treasure, and because it's a treasure, I desire others to see what is beautiful. What mountain climber doesn't try to drag every single one of their friends off the Katahdin? There was a man I knew in northern Idaho, and that was part of his checklist. The girl that he was going to marry, he'd make like his first date rock climbing. And I'm thinking, you know, you're not going to find a wife if you're going to make every girl have to go rock climbing, especially on the first or second date. But because he loved the mountains in Idaho, besides the avalanches that killed the skiers recently, but he knew the beauty of the mountains and the exhilaration of hanging by your fingernails on the side of a rock, I guess. But he wanted to communicate that. So when the gospel means something to us and we see it as being beautiful, of course, we don't have to think about it. It is just the desire that it be communicated far and wide. So that is John the Baptist. And that is the transformation that our Lord God gives to us that takes place through the baptismal ceremonies, which puts us on the path towards the eternal kingdom of light. So may the Lord God open our hearts, give us a great desire, renew our spirits in holiness, and allow us to walk this path of light to the kingdom of joy and the dwellings of delight. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.
and that once sanctified, we not slip and fall again. May the members of our body become holy, pure temples and dwelling places for God, in which his sublime majesty finds rest. May we be worthy to offer from the sanctuary ceaseless glory and easy praise with one voice to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God the Father and the harmony of the Son who rules over all and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies and forgives all be with us and among us and with these holy baptismal
And so we'll make the sign of the cross with what we call the mural. Myron is just the Greek word, but we want to turn it into a mural. And the point that we brought up with the boys is that when the Maronites consecrate the prism, you always take a small amount of last year's, because every year it's renewed. So you take a small part of the prism from last year's and you put it into that same vessel and then we consecrate this vessel. Which means that in this little vessel, we have the physical thing of the prism, the patriarch, the patriarch, the patriarch, the patriarch throughout the last 1,200 years. And it's a very touching linkage to see in Beit Marum. The Latins don't do this tradition, but that linkage of a physical connection even, not just simply the spiritual grace, which is transmitted generation to generation. But that's the meaning of the ceremony. You do the Alleluia.
Peace be with you. And also with you. Bow your heads before the merciful Lord and before the forgiving baptism and receive the blessings from the Lord. Oh, Lord, bless them in your holy name. Protect them with your holy cross from the evil one in his powers, now and forever. Amen. Now the anointing was a different oil. We just normally call it either holy oil or the oil of the catechumens. It signifies in the classical world when you anointed the athletes, the Greeks you all learned in social studies and history. And so the anointing takes place before this, which is the immediate preparation for the baptism. And you'll notice that in the directive, the rubric, we have that they faced east already for the first blessing. Now when we speak about God parents, we always think about, well, we have to find that gap that we haven't talked to in a long time, and we've got to find this niche or that, whatever. We tell me this the point of why God parents are sponsors. And throughout all the early centuries of the church, or many times it was adults converting, you had somebody who was already a member of the church testify and say, this person is serious and worthy of the preparation of the gospel. That was the sponsor. That was the God parent. That's the spiritual relationship which takes place. Now, the sponsor would bring the adult to the Baptist tree. And when they were there, they would help them down to the bottom. And after the blessing of the baptism, receiving exception of baptism, they would help them up out of the top. If you go to Rome, you have all the Baptist tree founds are about three feet deep. You stand in the well, and they bring the water over the top of your head. So the steps down and the steps up, that was your sponsor who brought you to this rebirth, who helps you out, and then after, clothes you in the white, which signifies your transformation and renewal. And so what will happen is, Steve and Allison are actually the godparents for both the boys. And so what they'll do is, when the boys, when each of the young men come up, they will face again the east, the resurrection, and the place of light. And when the water is poured over them, Alice and Steve will have their hands on their shoulders. And that is the signification of bringing them to the farm.
Alonso Nimitada is baptized the Lamb in the flock of Christ in the name of the Father. That's right. We're making that donation. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit for eternal life. This time a little more gusto. <laughs> Lorenzo Stephen is baptized the Lamb in the flock of Christ. May God who granted you to bear his living seal enable you to keep it in innocence for the life of your soul. In keeping your conscience and body pure from stain and your soul holy, may you be able to call the Father our Father. As he has made you worthy of his holy birth, may he make you worthy of eternal life. The second mystery that we do, that the Latins have put for later on in years, about the age of 10, is chrismation or confirmation. This is the perfecting of the baptism, but it is a totally different mystery. So the baptism initiates us into the flock, making it for our personal path of salvation. Chrismation is the next moment of perfecting of another character that makes us Christian for others. So then on the one hand, the baptism initiates our path to the kingdom, but chrismation establishes our foundation to be apostolic in the communication of that treasure. And the oil which is used is the chrism, or the nirvana.
As we explained a few weeks ago in this sermon, at this point, over the cross of the chrismation, the adult candidates receive a, a, well, a headband, but it signifies the crown of the children of God. You have been clothed with the living Father. You have received Christ the Son. And you have put on the Holy Spirit. You have been given the robe of glory which Adam had laid aside.
Telot madeb he dalocho, walot alocho dam khade tamyu, waynub silvot aymoto, heyun al baytof veskud al khayeklo, otro. Next, you have the white sheets for the transfer hymn for the season of the Epiphany in your pews.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary and Saint Jude and Saint Thecla. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the entire Michaud family, and specifically Alonzo and Lorenzo, now Nementala and Stephen. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Marin. With our guest, the non Maronite St. John Marin, is our first patriarch of Beit Marun from the year 685. We've been around for a while. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 8.97. Good and holy God and Father, through your only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you have prepared this spiritual and holy banquet for us. Accept these pure offerings and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to approach your sanctuary with pure hearts and with clear consciences. Grant us the peace that your only Son gave to his holy disciples that we may give one another that same peace with a holy kiss. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord.
O Lord, may your peace and security, your love, grace, and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask that your merciful right hand rest upon your servants who are here before your majesty, and mark us with the sign of life that we may raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Father of mercies, Lord of creation, Lord of the universe, unsearchable God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, born of you and equal to you. He is the radiance of your glory, the image of your being, and by your power the maker of all. In him you created the world in your grace. In him we see you, and from him we receive your spirit. In him the mystery of the Trinity, hidden from all ages, was revealed. We praise and thank you with our mouths that have been blessed by your word and cleansed with your forgiving hyssop. Those who glorify you are countless, cherubim and seraphim, thousands of spiritual beings standing before you, and myriads of fiery ranks serving your majesty. They sing triumphant hymns with harmonious voices. O Lord, although we are your weak and sinful children, make us worthy through the gift of your grace to sing with them and to proclaim. exalted our human nature through your grace. In your abundant mercy you sent your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into the world. He came down to us by the Holy Spirit, became flesh of the Virgin Mary, accomplishing all things for our salvation. And Sabe Lahma Veda Kodi Shanto Ubarah Kadesh Waksoya Bela Talmi Tao Kadamara Sab Mene Kulho Hono Denitao Fahuru Lo fai kun wah lov sa giem et akseo meti hab ho soyon hawe wa hoye na alam alami. Kanna alko so damsih wo men hamro wo men mayom Arach wo kadesh Ya bel talmi dao karomara Saab ishtaw mehne hulkho Khono denitao Dumo dilan diyati ki khadato 
Rahlufaikun, Rahlof Sagien, Meten Shadu Meti Hamb, Husoyon, Haume Wahoyen, and Alam Alami. Do this in memory of me. For whenever you gather in my name and eat this bread and drink of this cup, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. O oh Lord, we now remember that what you suffered and endured for us, your liberating and life-giving plan of salvation, your miraculous incarnation, your saving passion, your life-giving cross, and your life-giving death, your solemn burial, your joyous resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of the Father, and your second coming when you shall reward all people according to their deeds. O Lord, have compassion and pour out your mercy upon all of us, that we may enjoy the gifts of your heavenly church. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us. Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you. Have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved! For the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin morio, anin morio, anin morio, nite mor rojo chayu kadisho, unachen alain uar korbono chono. Since he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. Through these holy mysteries may sinners be absolved and enemies be reconciled. May those who hate find peace and those who are sad find joy. May those who grieve be consoled, and those who are sick be healed. May those in distress find comfort, and those who repent be humbled. May the prophets be remembered, the apostles honored, and all the martyrs crowned. And may the confessors exult, and all the angels rejoice. May your divinity be praised, and your trinity be honored. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always end forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice, the memorial of your passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection for your church throughout the world. She is founded on your hope, remembers your salvation, awaits your kingdom. We offer it for the bishops of the true faith, Grant them the wisdom and knowledge that comes from you and make them worthy to proclaim your kingdom, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. May all the shepherds of the Church sanctify their days by caring, in fear and in justice, for your people that you have entrusted to them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O Lord, the priests and deacons here and everywhere who serve diligently and are vigilant over their flocks. May they receive their reward. Remember those who have taken vows of chastity and holiness, who keep their bodies and thoughts pure that they may triumph in their efforts. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders who love you and all those whom you wish to govern us. Strengthen and assist them so they may live in peace under their, we may live in peace under their leadership. Crown them with true faith and good works. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the children of the church, redeemed by your passion and given life by your death. For they share in your resurrection, those who are far and those who are near, those who are weak and those who are strong. Remember those who have presented the offerings upon your altar and accept them on your heavenly altar. Hear their just requests and, exchange, and in exchange for their earthly gifts, grant them the gifts of heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those whom we have remembered and those whom we have not. In your mercy, have compassion on them. Remember especially those in distress who experience hardships, the poor, the weak, and the grieving, those in exile, captives, and prisoners, the oppressed, outcast and the dejected, orphans and the widows. Remember those bound by chains of sin and subjected to various passions. Through your body and blood, may their sins be forgiven, their faults be pardoned, their weaknesses be cured, and their wounds be healed. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, in your great mercy, our fathers and patriarchs, the teachers of your holy church, who were pleasing to you from the beginning. By the glorious light of their teaching, they brought people back from the darkness of ignorance and the true light of the holy gospel. And they fought to preserve integrity of the true faith. Through their holy prayers, grant peace to your churches, monasteries, and convents and put an end to wars and all strife throughout the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all your saints, especially Mary, the holy ever-Virgin Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and all who profess the Trinity in the true faith. Through their holy prayers and petitions, look upon us with the eyes of compassion, and may your calming and pleasant face shine upon us. Make us worthy to share in their reward and their inheritance, and may their shadow be a shelter of protection for us on that fearful day of judgment. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in the sweetness of your compassion, receive the souls of our brothers and sisters, the children of baptism, who have gone to you in the true faith from this world of darkness, especially those from the sacrifices offered. May the mystery of your body and blood be a pledge of life for them, a fire that consumes all sins, a burning coal that destroys transgressions. In your mercy, grant them rest in the dwellings of light and joy in the heavenly Jerusalem. O lover of all people, grant us life, abundant blessings and mercy, and forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, 
and join us to your righteous ones and to all those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. O Lord, adorn our souls with your truth and sanctify us by your holy gifts. May you dwell among us that we may be secure. May your peace live within our hearts, your faith abide in our consciences, and your holy cross be a true sign of protection for your church. May our tongues proclaim your truth and repeat your holy prayer and our lips pour forth glorious thanks to you, that with you we dare to call the Father Abba, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord, do not lead us, your lowly children, into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we have approached your holy altar, the source of divine gifts. May we share in your holy mysteries and join the assembly of those who glorify you that we may raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life, O Lord our God. You be glory for us.
again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. The lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God, Father of great mercy, and we praise and glorify you for having made us worthy of your holy banquet and of sharing in your life-giving mysteries. We implore you, do not condemn us on that fearful day, but deliver us from all shame and disgrace, that we may join the assembly of your saints, so that with them and among them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So the blessing is changed, the second one, and your blue books, it's on page 52. It's for the newly baptized. Page 52. 
O Lord God, magnificent and fearsome, you grant forgiveness of sins to those who are born by baptism through water and spirit. You bestow a new life to those corrupted by sin. You raise up those who have fallen. You shield those who come close to you. O Lord, enlighten the hearts of your servants, Alonzo Nemtale and Lorenzo Stephen, who have just received baptism. As you enabled them to become sons of your grace, in your merciful kindness, keep them firmly in the ranks of your children. Grant, O Lord, that after being purified with the waters of your covenant, that they may be members of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a redeemed people, a blessed community. May they not put aside with the visible robe of this body, the invisible and hidden robe which is you, our Christ. But be for them, O Lord God, an invisible and incorruptible robe, so that they may be strong against the desires of error and invincible before evil spirits. It is fitting for you, O Lord, to show compassion, to redeem and to save all those who turn to you. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. So we take this moment to thank you for coming out on this day, which, regardless of the announcements of the Weather Channel, I think was the inundation of grace by all the flooding of waters. Please also take the moment, if you can, since we're a little flock today, to, to take advantage downstairs and come down for the little reception with the boys. And of course, we take this occasion for Alonzo, who has taken the patron saint of Nementala, Hardini, and Lorenzo, who's taken the great archdeacon, proto-martyr, St. Stephen. I think we can take a moment to wish them Mabruk. Congratulations. <laughs> Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.